Peace, Lenin, the USSR. These were the words sent out into space in the end of 1968. The Deep Space Communication Center launched this message at Venus, but the beam was so wide that just a small part of it reflected from the planet's surface back to Earth. The radio waves went roaming the universe, thus becoming the humanity's first interstellar message. Of course, two-thirds of this message, even nowadays, would have to be explained to school children. Not everybody knows what's the USSR. So, even if the message likely gets to some aliens, they are unlikely to get it. Get it? Today, I'll tell you how to communicate with creatures that we have no knowledge about whatsoever. Soviet astrophysicists acknowledged the meaninglessness of transmitting a text signal. The message with Morse code was aimed to check if radio traffic between Earth and Venus was possible. Scientists and engineers were preparing to launch an autonomous station that would land on the planet closest to Earth. The experiment was a success. The reflected signal came after almost five minutes since the transmission had been started. A big part of the signal went in the direction of Libra constellation. In 2005, astronomers discovered a planetary system near one of the stars in the constellation. There are six planets around Glissa 581, and one of them is habitable. It is situated about 20 light years away from Earth, so the local scientist had had enough time to detect the message from Earth and respond. Either the inhabitants of Gliese 581 didn't notice the signal in the mix of radio waves in the universe, or aren't eager to establish diplomatic relations with us. However, there was a response from another place in space, from Archer constellation. In August 1975, Big Air Telescope in Ohio detected a strange signal. During the 72 seconds, while the antenna was aimed at that point in space, it was receiving a kind of radiation unlike any natural radiation background in terms of its properties. The signal altered its intensity six times. Nothing like that had ever been noticed in the whole history of astronomical observations. There are still no versions whatsoever on how such signal form could emerge naturally. This signal went down in history as wow. That was what Dr. Jeremy Amon had written on the telescope record printout. There is yet another episode involving a wow signal. It was detected on the frequency with wavelengths of 21 cm. This is a frequency most scientists suggest using for finding intelligent life. Why is that? Radiation of this frequency has similar wavelength with neutral hydrogen, and neutral hydrogen is the basic element of modern radio physics. It makes up more than half of the known galaxy's mass. Studying that radiation uncovers more knowledge about mass distribution in galaxies, their structures, and data on spiral arms. Other spectral lines are either too weak or present in too little space. This is also important due to the fact that hydrogen is the element number one on the periodic table. It is likely that brothers of man have a different perspective on the periodic table. For example, it could be presented in spirals or cones, but it would probably still start or end with hydrogen, the most simple and common element in the universe. We have no idea on what other world species look like, but we do know physics fundamentals, which are the same for all. That's why neutral hydrogen radio lines are the best bet for such radio traffic. Now we know what frequency to work with, but how do we convince the recipients that we are rational beings? Here's the second universal science comes at hand – mathematics. As the example with Morse code and the first message to aliens showed, letter codes are not the best idea. Even a simple Morse code message has a few complicating factors. Turning sounds of our language into letters of words is the first level of information conversion. 
Morse code conversion of words in Cyrillic or Latin would be very different. Binary code is much more universal. One or zero, signal or no signal. It can't be more simple. And as for the content, common mathematical concepts seem like a better choice. The first things that crossed my mind was number pi. The constant which is recognizable and common. The circle's circumference to its diameter is the same for all inhabitants of three-dimensional space. Then I figured that fundamentally the number pi is notional. We could have set it as a circle's circumference to its radius. And the value would have half. I don't think green aliens wouldn't figure it out. But still, that is a complicating factor. I didn't like the other parts of Eulerian model. Sure, it's elegant and fundamental, but I'd like something as simple as hydrogen. That's when I thought of prime numbers. The numbers that can be divided without a remainder only by one or by the same number. They are the basics of the theory of numbers. Without them, modern informatics would be impossible, from modular arithmetics to cryptography algorithms. Moreover, series of prime numbers, unlike that of Fibonacci numbers, are impossible to come across in nature. Such series are created as a result of understanding the universal language of mathematics. Well, now we know how to draw attention of those extraterrestrial civilizations. We have a frequency to use and even a ringtone, those prime numbers. Can we transmit a larger amount of information? Not just shout, we're here, we're intellectual, but tell them more about us. Actually, we can. In November 1974, I received an observatory telescope sent a message at Hercules constellation. It took scientists 169 seconds to send 1679 digit long message out to the stars. There is a reason for choosing such message length. 1679 can be converted in two prime number multipliers. So the information can be presented in a rectangular matrix in two ways only. Like this or like that. As you can easily notice, there is a pattern only if it is presented vertically. The other option seems chaotic. But I don't think we are expected to transmit some randomly generated numbers. Now you know what that correctly converted message looks like. But what does it mean? Let me explain. The first four lines make perfect sense for any developer. It is a row of numbers from 1 to 10 in binary, of course. The second part states atomic numbers of chemical elements which form our DNA. The third part describes nucleotides, chemical element blocks that our DNA consists of. Next, there is a sketch of DNA double helix and under it a human outline with ciphered height parameters. This human stands on the third planet from the Sun. And in the last part, there's a drawing of the radio telescope Arecibo itself. Would you be able to decipher something like that? I would neither. I hope that in the next 25,000 years, Hercules' constellation will have better cryptographers than myself. Though the radio is not the only space-friendly feature of humanity, some scientists seem quite fond of old-school postal services that took forever to deliver their parcels. So they send a few to some fellow brothers of man. First in 1972 and then in 1973, some aluminium blades were sent into space, attached to Pioneer 10 and 11 satellites. The former should deliver the parcel to Aldebaran and the latter to the Aquila Nebula. The former parcel is due in 2 million years and the latter in 4. Let's have a look at what each planet gets eventually. The disks are similar. First, there is a sketch of the already familiar neutral hydrogen. The distance between the molecules is proportional to that 21 cm. It acts as a scale for the drawing of humans. 
a man and a woman against the satellites. It may come in handy for understanding our height, in case the aliens don't get the hydrogen rebus at once. To the left of those humans, there's a drawing of the sun. There are 14 lines going out from its center. Those lines end with distinct marks, pulses, and have lengths proportional to the pulses' distances to the sun. At the bottom, there's our solar system map for navigation, but it is already outdated. Pluto is no longer a planet, but I hope the bureaucracy on Earth won't stand in the way of those guests' ability to read the map. The recipients of the other parcel will be at an even greater luck. On board the voyagers that have already left the solar system, the luggage space is pretty big. The outer box looks like the Pioneer's plates. The navigation information for aliens remained the same, but the humans were replaced with instructions on how to play back the information discs hidden inside. The disc itself, the video disc rather, contains recordings of greetings on about 50 Earth languages. Then there is a playlist of 37 tracks, traditional music of different peoples, classical recordings of Bach, Mozart, Beethoven and Stravinsky. And if the aliens consider those boring, they might like Louis Armstrong or Chuck Berry. Besides, there are various recordings of sounds of nature, animals and human voices. The next section consists of more than a hundred pictures recorded as audio, photos of Earth, shots from space and landscapes, DNA structures and basic anatomical data. Moreover, there are pictures of pets, humans' everyday life, ranging from work in farms to sporting events. I don't know if the alien recipients will be able to understand and appreciate that content. And one conclusion they can draw, but anyway, it won't happen anytime soon. Those who sent the voyagers were optimistic enough to think that those aliens have eyes and ears like we do. But I'm afraid that intellectual amoeba, arachnids, or even some distant relatives of Earth's bats won't be able to appreciate the useful data in the message. Maybe it is for the best. My paranoid inner self rings the alarm and screams that brothers of man are unlikely to look and act like cute little Ewoks. What if the more advanced race wants to steal our resources or play some Hunger Games? At least in the human history, there were hardly any positive encounters with more advanced civilizations, especially for Indians or Australian Aborigines. Overall, I didn't dig into that stuff just for fun. They came in peace. I want to send my very own message to some aliens, and I'll tell you about it in the next Cybercoach project. Just wait for it. Bye-bye.